pretty good. And yeah. then he had that breakaway on that shovel pass. Just talk about what you see from him. Yeah, I'm starting to see uh, Bronte starting to act like he knows what the hell is going on. Excuse my language. Yeah. You know, uh, he's, 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 learned the, he's learned the offense and he's starting to play fast. And, you know, we're starting to see the things that Bronte already had within himself, but it's just now coming through his execution. So it's just a matter of him uh, becoming a student of the game, learning the game, and now he's playing it fast. What's it like for a coach? Is it frustrating when you don't see that development? Absolutely. Happen? But that's my job as a coach. If I don't have that diversity as a coach, then, you know, they don't really need a coach. <laughs> for people who say, that, well, obviously lost a great running back in Carlos Hyde, how yeah. can they possibly replace that production? What do you say? I said, it has to be replaced. You know, this is the Ohio State University, it's the next man up. And I'm sure if you ask uh, Carlos Hyde, he'll tell you the same thing. You know, it's the next man up. So somebody has to step up and fill the shoes of Carlos Hyde. If it takes more than one guy to do that, I promise you it's going to get done. Ezekiel said that he's uh, gained 20 pounds, he's yeah. bigger, stronger. How different is he from last year? Well, I'll tell you what, it's not different. You know, he's still going hard as he can possibly go. The one thing about Bryante, he walked in the door with an, I'm, I'm sorry, the one thing about Ezekiel is that he walked through the door with an incredible work ethic, and that has, you know, sustained. Now it's a matter of him taking his game to the next level, anticipating a little bit quicker, uh, understanding defense a little bit more. So he's still got a ways to go in his development, um, but he's definitely on track. Stan, you said one way or the other, the production will be replaced. Do you prefer to have a Carlos type, just one guy do it? Or? I'll tell you what, that's an interesting question. I prefer a guy who's going to be productive, period. I don't care, you know, how it gets done. You know, it's not a matter of me getting the prototypical six foot, 230, no, it's not that. If it's if it's 5'9", and if it's 200 pounds, and if you're going to do what I'm asking you to do at the level I'm going to ask you to do it, then we're going we're gonna to live with that. Does it have to be... It's a different side from that. Just one guy being carrying the load, or do you? Yeah. I'm always going to operate under the notion that I need at least three. Mm -hmm. I need at least three, you know, and it's five. Of them. Uh, he may have lost it last year, no doubt. You know, we redshirted him last year, and that's tough, you know, especially after playing your freshman year. We asked him to take a step back in his development, uh, get in the weight room, get stronger, you know, uh, get his body right. And uh, he did that. You know, now he has another opportunity, so he's hungry again. You know, uh, if any one of these bats come out here um, with the notion that, you know, um, I'm upset, I'm mad, you know, and uh, they get out here and they lack in production. Guess what? They just hurt themselves. So you can't afford to come out here with that mindset, and Bronte is not doing that. Rod was saying all the right things, at least from a team standpoint. What yeah. is your uh, analysis of him so far as friend? Rod's doing a phenomenal job right now. Um, you know, he's, he's more physical than he's ever been. You know, Rod being a six, two and a half back, a little bit tougher for him. Everything's longer. The arms are longer. So that's why you saw a little bit of the struggle with the ball security early in his career. Um, uh, he didn't break a whole lot of tackles. That's all because he didn't know how to drop his hips. It's a lot tougher to drop your hips when you're six two and a half than you you know than if you were five ten five eleven. You know. So now he's really he was Bambi ish. You know for his first three years of college football. Now he's starting to grow into that body and learn how to use it and, and create power angles for himself and it's starting to really show in this execution. So he's, he is really on the right track. I'm excited for Rob. Assuming Warren Ball still in the mix? And Absolutely. All those guys are in the, in the mix. You know, they're so competitive. They all bring something different to the table. You know, they all have a different style. They all have different strengths and weaknesses. And um, they can all help this football team. You know, so they, they bring different value. Um, just looking to see who can be the most consistent at this point. Is Jalen in, in your room, by the way? Though. Is Jalen Marshall in your room? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I said, how many of them are Bambi-ish? That's the question. <laughs> you spelled that, Michael. <laughs> That's how you, how you spell that. <laughs> We're in trouble with that one. <laughs> That's why they dance. We'll figure it out. Well, they're all, they're all like, bam. You, you guys understand Bambi. Yeah, you guys understand. <laughs> okay. All right, you know, uh, I'll say, you know, the only one that's real Bambi-ish right now is um, Curtis, you know, who's not in right now, but um, he shows some unbelievable flashes of being a, a dynamic football player, but he just don't know what he don't know. You know, he just doesn't know how to go about doing it right now. So, um, got some work to do. <laughs> Who's Donner and Blitzen? No, I'm just <laughs> Who's trying to think of the <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who to tell you that one, man. Stan, is, is Jalen, was Jalen Marshall in, is he in your room? No, he's not. Okay, and Curry Samuel is? Curry and, Samuel And Dontre is? is? Dontre is not. not. He's not. Right. But you've seen a little flash of Dontre. Do you see a little difference about him this spring? I yeah, mean, what he knows what he's doing. 
Yeah. He knows what he's doing. He's starting to really um, take ownership of that position. You know, he's asking the right questions. You know, the one thing about Dontre, Dontre walked through the door with a, a mentality. He, he ain't scared of anything now. He is not a shy person at all. Mm -hmm. uh, he will ask a dumb question and not feel bad about it. And we encourage that. We encourage that. You know, so as long as he keeps that mindset, he's going to continue to grow as a football player. And because of that, he has. How valuable is, because you're in the same room a lot with uh, the me me's and stuff, how valuable is it for Cardale? And JT to be having these kind of reps, unbelievable. I mean, just and what it's have you priceless. seen from them from a progress? It's priceless. I mean, to when do you ever have an opportunity as a backup quarterback to actually, <laughs> you know, take the reins, mm -hmm. you know, and run the offense and and, and enforce the presence and impose your presence on that unit? When do you ever have an opportunity? Yeah, you can sit back in the meeting room and study the film and learn the ball and get better at it, learn schematics and get better at it, no doubt about it. But to actually be in there and running it, you know, those are priceless reps, mm -hmm. you know, and um, it's amazing how much better those two are just because of that. Got time for a couple more? What's your level of confidence in this group as a whole that by the season start, you're going to be where you want to be? I'm extremely confident that we're going to get to um, where we need to be. I'm extremely confident. Um, they have a a culture that's being created in that room right now that they're trying to be the hardest working uh, unit on the football field. And I really see them trying to do that. And if they keep that mindset and um, you know keep that unselfishness in their back pocket somewhere, um, we're definitely going to exceed our goals. I really believe that. Yeah, sure. Ron said he's admitted he's made quote a lot of quote mistakes in his career sure. up to this point. Sure. But he said you know once they now he wants to be a leader, wants to be kind of the, the guy that brings those guys along. Are you start seeing that up with him as far I, as I, I definitely see him trying to do that. I really do. You know, um, you know, anytime you have a young man who can self reflect on his mistakes like he did with you in front of his teammates. Now it's easy to do it with you. It ain't so easy to do in front of his brothers. And that's what he's doing right now in front of his brothers. To me that shows leadership. What's he doing? At the, how's he doing? He's, well, you know, he's just standing in front of, hey, these are the mistakes that I made. You're not going to make them. You know why? Because I'm not going to let you. That's the kind of special stuff that goes on in our room. I want to keep it special, so I want to expose everything, you know, but um, I really love the way, uh, I love the bond that we're developing in that room. At the Combine, Carlos was saying how frustrating it is right now for running backs that are that they're going into the NFL yeah. and just the devaluation the GMs and coaches have. I mean, this will be like the first time in history if, if there's not one draft in the first round. How do you keep your guys? I mean, obviously you're working on your own stuff, but the position itself seems to be getting devalued at the higher levels. And how do you fight that? Um, I guess the only thing I'll say is try to play the game without one. <laughs> That's all I got to say. That's all I got. <laughs> but, you know, these guys are motivated by the NFL. And uh, somebody like a Carlos Hyde doesn't come around often, OK? And uh, when they see a big 235 pound guy run around with agile quickness and catching the ball and doing things like that, how can you say you don't want that guy on your team? You do have to protect the quarterback, don't you? Yeah. You know, if you don't want him for anything else, you want 235 pounds back there protecting the quarterback. There will always be a back in this, uh, in this game and uh, they'll always be motivated. Do you that. worry at all that, that at the younger levels, kids yeah, will start to say, okay. you know what, I'd rather play safety, I'd rather do something else. It's, this isn't no, because you know at the younger levels they still give that ball to the backs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's still wing team offenses. I mean, the number one offense in high school football in Ohio is the wing T, and that that fullback is getting that ball. You know, and uh, there's still a lot of great high school running backs out here being developed. I mean, this year alone in the recruiting, 2015 has a, uh, a unbelievable pool of running backs. You know, they're gonna go somewhere. You know, so I'm hoping that we can get a couple here. Stan, how much did Carlos? <laughs> how much did Carlos's example last year help this year? Reminding guys, okay, maybe if I thought I was physical, you know, that was that was a grown man running out there. Right? Yeah, yeah. It's when you turn the film on and you watch Carlos and you, you you have an opportunity to evaluate some of the things that he did. I mean, it's really incredible, and um, he's a great example for us right now. You know, indirectly, and uh, the thing that he's been. The best example for us is is off the field. You know how he grew into manhood, how he became, you know, unselfish, and his business on the football field became more about his teammates. Those are the things that we harp on, you know, person to person in that room. 
and actually we shared with the whole entire team. That was a transformation of a boy going to manhood, a uh, guy who's made some mistakes, that's, hey, that's confessed his mistakes, uh, that have gone on to do some great things. So that's been the example that we like to expose in Carlos, and it doesn't hurt me to turn the film on and you see him play. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, guys.